On this week's show, we meet the former Marine whose life fell apart after being forced into an early retirement. He's now turned his life around through property investing. We're going to be discussing the pros and cons of buying properties through auctions. And in the news, well actually on the news, on BBC News, a multi-millionaire who, for some reason, gave it all up to start again in an attempt to become financially free. I wonder who that could be. Welcome to the Property Investors Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're here every single Friday at 4pm. You can catch us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify and YouTube. I hope you enjoyed this week's show. Make sure you subscribe so that you never miss an upload and don't forget to share with all your friends. Hi, I'm Russell Leeds. I'm Alistair Cunningham. And thanks for joining us this week on the Property Investors Podcast. It's been a busy it's been a busy time for us recently. We have been flat out. Literally, yeah. I think it was 10 days now in a back-to-back course, back-to-back Just events. Just doing event after event yeah. after event. Yeah, no days off. Been, been nuts. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm absolutely beat. What's your highlight Highlight been? I really enjoyed the crash course in London. Mm-hmm. Um, the first one back after Christmas, because it, it was like the, the, the thing to get us into 2019, wasn't it? Um, so everyone's been off over Christmas, and then we all come back. and we're... So your highlight from the last week was something that happened weeks ago great um it was 10 days ago man <laughs> but it, it feels like last week because we've not stopped but um no that was good i really enjoyed that um what about the fact that you released a book no that's not the highlight oh, yes that's not the highlight no, no it is yeah is that the book came out uh, i think it was two days ago two days ago um so it, how, it was how, actually officially published on amazon i think it was two days ago perfect um, let me let me see if i can get the link up I'm um, sure Nick can put the link at the bottom if that's okay. Okay, yeah. And you um, don't look at Alistair's. But it is, it is on Amazon. Beautiful picture. Yeah. Taken by our wonderful photographer. Uh, I'm not being rude. I'm just finding the link for you. So it's on Amazon. Uh, it's called Whatever It Takes. And there it is. I know this, obviously this is for the YouTube people that can see it. But if you're listening, it's called Whatever It Takes. Can you see that, Nick? You can call if you if you're listening on on podcast. It's called Whatever It Takes by Alistair Cunningham. Um, it's about my journey and it's about my my uh, adventures since getting into property. Yeah. So uh, he still hasn't sent it, mate. I've been asking him. I'm like, mate, send me a copy. Send me I a copy. I said you can have a copy, but it's ten ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's free in this world. I, I, I can tell. I can tell. And it is, it's quite <laughs> it's quite funny. I did have a copy. I had one copy, one copy in the world. The proof. The proof that has got my notes in it. And, um, and we Samuel were, was like, can I tell, can I, he was like, can I tell people about your book? Yeah. And, they, and he was like, yeah, 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 tell them to <laughs> one of the events. And he went up and he I've got a book, who wants it? And, and he then gave he gave it away. It away. <laughs> and I said, was like, that's like my only copy with my notes in and everything. Oh, I don't mind. So it, 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 it could be a, a good book for somebody. Maybe I should just ask Samuel if I can have one then. Maybe yeah, that no, I've, I've got, I have got a couple getting delivered here today, so I'll give you one of them. Oh, I really appreciate it. Thank you very How much. How would you like to pay? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'll give you one, man. I'll pay. I'll pay. With, I'll pay with Starbucks vouchers. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. Awesome. That's cool. Uh, okay, so uh, we're starting off this week. Should we? Should we start with the pros and cons of buying at auction? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a good subject. I get asked this question a lot actually about auction properties. So we have a little breakdown right now from Samuel about the pros and cons of breaking up. Breaking up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the wrong program, mate. <laughs> from, of of buying. Breaking up. What is on my mind? Of buying properties from auction. Check it out. So the pros, the first pro to buying from auction is usually if someone's selling their house on an auction, they're normally pretty motivated. And we know that the best deals are from motivated sellers. So to put your house on an auction, you're probably quite motivated. So it is possible to pick up bargain properties from auctions because you're dealing with motivated sellers. Second pro is there's no messing around. You're not gonna get into a a, a bidding war that drags on later. You're gonna go down to the auction. You're gonna put your best offer forward. If it's not Accepted, fine. If it's accepted, then you've got a certain short time period com- to complete. You're not going to get gazumped. No messing around. Straight to the point, which you know is quite an attractive aspect to buying from auction. And then thirdly, is it's quite fun. You know, going down to an auction, there's a lot of excitement. It's quite satisfying when you win in auction. Th- they're the three pros. The cons are in auction. It's usually flooded with properties. Not always, but properties that have got something wrong with them. Now that's okay if 
your experience, then you can figure out what's wrong with the property and you can then add value. But if you're just starting out and you're not that wise to property, you can get burned by buying a property. You can't just pull out. You can't go, oh, actually, the property's got something wrong with it, so I'm gonna pull out. If you do, you're gonna get fined badly. So problem properties is definitely a con if you don't know what you're doing. Second con is even if you win at the auction, you're still the loser. In fact, the winner of an auction is usually the biggest loser of them all because imagine, who here is the loser who's prepared to pay the most money for this pillow? You know, there could be, if there's 200 people in a room and you're the person that's prepared to pay the most, then you're the loser. So the winners are the losers and the, the losers are the winners in a way from auction. So that, that, that's another con, you're the person that's prepared to pay the most. So again, unless you're really wise, and you know that you're gonna pay that amount because you're gonna be able to add serious value, that's another con. Third con, and possibly the biggest con, and the reason why I advise against auctions the most for people that are starting out, the whole purpose of an auction and the way it's wired is it's all about emotions. And what they'll do is they'll tap into your emotions, they'll play you off against other people to try and manipulate you into paying the absolute maximum price you will for that property. I really believe that when emotions are high and you're excited and emotions are high, intelligence is low. And that's exactly what they want to happen. I mean, you've probably heard in my videos before I say, buy with formulas, not feelings. Auctions often all about feelings. They trap you because what happens is, because on the day, if you buy it, you've got to go ahead. Then what happens is before you go, you're gonna do your research. You're gonna do a survey on the property. You're gonna probably invest time and money researching the property, which means that you're now invested. So when you go to the auction, you're now invested your energy and your money's invested and you really want that house, you'll end up paying over the odds for it because you're already emotionally attached. What happens in auction is a lot of people break the rules of not being emotionally attached, of using formulas, not feelings. So the, the key is be very, very careful if you're buying from auction. Often people think, you know, oh, you know, you buy bargain properties. Do you buy from auction then? Which is a bit of a myth, a bit of a misconception. I've actually got friends and what they do is they buy properties that are run down and need a lot of work doing and they buy them straight up from high street agents or from right move they do nothing to them at all they've run down houses apart from board up the windows and muddy them up a bit and make them even worse they then put them on an auction and they sell them for more on an auction than they paid for them from the high street so getting bargains from auctions is actually a little bit can be a little bit of a myth so I'm gonna give you a few tips if you are buying from auction in how to do it and what to do firstly the castle that we own we bought from an auction but if you're gonna go to an auction have the maximum price that you're to, you're prepared to pay for that property in mind before you go and do not go a pound above that price that you've set do not go a pound above it decide in the cold light of day what you're gonna pay and then do do not go a pound above it. And that way, you've got to be super disciplined. That's the first tip or piece of advice. Second, which is really important, is buy pre or post auction, not actually in the room. And why would you do that? Well, if there's a property that's going to auction, work out what you'd be prepared to offer it, and then just put that forward to the, to the agent. Just say, I'm happy to buy this before it goes to auction this is what I'm prepared to pay for it. That's a very good way to pick up properties. Post auction is even better because if you, if you imagine how someone would feel if they put their property on auction and they're just desperate to just get rid of it in one foul swoop, there was 200 people in the room, let's say, and it didn't sell, it didn't even hit the reserve price, that seller is gonna have gone from motivated to almost desperate, very, very motivated, which is a good time to then come in. Find properties that have not sold at the auction then come in post auction. That's another really good way to buy properties. And then a final little tip around auctions that I've got is if you're not looking to buy properties, but you're looking to package and sell properties because maybe you've got no money. Little tip that came from my friend Kenneth Hahn. He said that if you're looking for people to sell properties to, the best place to find them is from an auction because if you go to an auction, everyone went to an auction because they've got money, because they were wanting to invest or, or to buy a property. There's only one winner per property, obviously, but there's, there's the, most people at the end of the auction have not bought anything, and they're probably feeling very disappointed that they didn't buy anything, that they missed out. So you're in a room filled with people who want to buy property, who are really keen, who have the money, who are now really disappointed because they weren't able to because they got gazumped by someone else. What a perfect opportunity to go up to them and say, hey, sorry you missed out. I've actually got a deal. If you're interested, I can drop you an email if you've got a card. Like what an opportunity to find investors to sell them your deal. So there's a little golden nugget as well for you guys. So have you ever bought from auction like 
property from auction? I've not bought property from auction. I've bought cars and vehicles and buses from auction, but not property mm. um, in my former... And is that different, current. the same? No, it's same. It's the, the principle is the exact same. Okay. Auctions are auctions. It doesn't matter if you're buying a property or if you're buying a house or... So are you an experienced... Actually, it doesn't matter if you're buying property or a house. They're the same thing. It doesn't matter if you're buying property or, or anything. The, 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 the format is the exact same. So are you um, an experienced auction No, person? I wouldn't say I'm experienced. I've bought a few times. How many times? I've certainly not bought a castle from auction, but I've bought a few times. How I don't know, times? three or four. Three or four. Yeah. I did buy a, a, a bus from an auction once. That's good. So is that is that a good thing? He said it like it was. It was, no, really it was a good thing because I made a bit of money on it. So he was buying Okay, it. cool. So what's your tips then? What, what do you think of Samuel's points first um, of all? Do you know, it, auctions are very... Tr- what Samuel's saying about auctions are very true is they thrive on most people's emotions and I think it's a case of that it's... I think it's a man thing. When you go to auction, you, you don't want to be outbid by the other person. So it's like, you're not going to beat me, so I'm going to beat you. And it, So you just women keep, better at auctions? I think women probably are better at auctions because I think they're a bit more controlled in that sense. Okay. I think they are because um, the male macho this comes into it, doesn't it? You don't want to be beaten by you. It's also emotion. Yeah, yeah. And women are more emotional. Yeah, but I don't think... I don't think they have that same sort of... Um, what's the word um, macho-ness against other people do they if they have a thing in their head and they'll stick to it generally mm. whereas men will be like just paying off a couple of grand paying off a couple of grand before you know it, you've spent 10-15 grand extra on um, a bus like for instance like when you were buying your auction yeah you done I very didn't buy well I auction I bought at auction you bought at auction yeah but you done like well because you had a number in your head you didn't go above it I actually did see he sucked I did see? suck I went over it by 5 grand yeah, okay, but in the grand scheme of things, how much was it, 800k? 800 was my cut-off, I went 805. Okay, because I so, thought, what about if if his cut-off is 800 as yeah, well? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Auctions thrive on that emotion because that's where they make the money. Bearing in mind, an auctioneer gets paid a percentage of whatever it sells for, mm. plus a buyer's fee. So the higher it sells, the bigger their fee because they, they work in brackets. Um, depending on the auction house, but most auction houses work in brackets. So if it sells for between this and this, they get paid this fee. They know what they're doing, um, though, don't they, they? Of course, they know what they're doing. It's not. And, and it's thing. I don't know if you know this, but have you ever heard of bidding against the wall? I have actually. Okay. So for those that don't know, bidding against the wall is where an auctioneer can just pull bids from the middle of nowhere mm. um, up until the reserve point. So if the if the property of the the items not moving, so in this case, if the property's not moving, they can bid against the wall. They just literally, just, which basically just means just, that they can just go. 800, yeah, yeah. To, to, to the wall. They just make a, make a bid up. Or the chandelier. Um, up to, they can only legally go up to the reserve. They can't go above the reserve. Um, but it just gets things going. Uh, what would they do if they went, oh yeah, 800 over there to the, to the, to the man in the really tall, flat, brown outfit. <laughs> and then if no one else bid after that, well, they, they, go they once, would... crap. Yeah. Go twice. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, you're the winner. Moving on to the... What would yeah. you what they do? Well, it would be a very awkward conversation, wouldn't it, with the guy selling the stuff in it? Well, you sold it. Yeah, I sold it to the door. <laughs> <laughs> See if we can get a check can we try the and get, Can we try and get the other guy to, to bid five grand less? See, this is what... It. When me and you were talking about your auction property... Yeah. I, I, I'm always a little bit suspicious... I'm, I'm suspicious. With, a, with, ...with what happened. I don't trust auctions because... You never know who's put in there to try and bid things up. Like, for instance, the guy that was bidding... Because I remember you told me when you were doing the castle, yeah. all the other bidders sort of dropped off about 500 grand. And then it was just you two went up to 800 grand, and then suddenly he went quiet. And no, it, he outbid me. Oh, did he outbid you? Yeah, he outbid me. But then he fell out. He, he, he fell, fell out of bed. bed, yeah. So, and they came back to us. Yeah, so I do wonder sometimes if that was done on purpose maybe mm. maybe it's just the skeptic in me i don't no, know No, i agree i agree um, I'm, I'm, because I'm it could quite skeptical. easily be couldn't it, it could yeah. quite easily that some they could just if i if i was selling something at auction i could send my friend down and say just bid it up get the money up, and then just disappear and then just say no i can't complete what i what i did think was weird is that like i didn't have to um like sign in or anything yeah. like that i literally just walked in the room I did thought, you not what? did you get a bat did you get one of these things you pulled <clears> up like you go yep yep no i just was really cool and just sort of went like oh, okay were you were you were you were you shaking underneath? Yeah. Were you very nervous? I was nervous. Yeah, I must admit. I was nervous. Yeah, I, I would and I be really wanted to beat him. Uh, yeah. See, that's your emotions. That's the I male matchiness coming in. But I had the logic in there that stopped my emotions. Yeah. So it's just like I go to that point and I stop. So I think you've got well, to be. You've got to be controlled. If you ain't controlled, don't do this. Mm. If you're going to go in there and pay 
pay over the odds for something, don't do it. So but they, often they the people cons. do pay over the odds. Yeah, but there's got to be pros to this. It can't all be negative. Yeah. Like, you can get some bargains at auctions. Absolute dumps of places that are worth good money, but people yeah. get put off because they're in a right you've, old state. You've got to do your... If you're buying an auction, you've seriously got to do your due diligence on the property first. Yeah, and the and the, and the pro, I think I think it's ki- that's kind of the problem because what happens is is that you go along, you've got to do all this work on the mm. property beforehand. Yeah, and you get emotionally invested in the property. Yeah, and then you're thinking in your head, oh, we'll still make money on it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, let's just go up there and just go. But everyone's thinking that, mm. and every, and it just drives the price up and up and up. So what you need to do. The, is you need to go to the property properly, do your due diligence. Yeah. Uh, like I would never do my own due diligence on looking around because I know I don't know what I'm talking about. What with regards to like the what needs what what yeah. work needs doing? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you need someone to go in that actually knows what they're talking yeah. about. Go around it, have a look, get a proper quote, check everything out. You know, you're not. The good, you, the you good can't thing, pull out, can you? That's it. Well, the good thing with auctions, all the properties are listed and you, you can view them all before. They have viewing days, don't they, generally? Yeah. Um, so it's not like you're going to an auction and you're buying it completely blind. You've generally no. viewed it. Um, you've generally had a, you've had plenty of time to You need to, to come up with a it. figure that you're happy with in your head mm-hmm. and then just stop when you Stick get to, to that it. figure and that's yeah. it. Um, yeah, I agree with that. Um, so do you think all these TV programs like Homes Under the Hammer or all that sort of stuff, do you think they... I think I actually think they do. A, they make it appeal a, appear to be very easy. I've never watched it. Well, I have seen a few of them, but they, they make it appear to be very very easy. Yeah. Um, going to an auction, just buying a property, and they, it's like living the dream, isn't it? Going to an auction, buying a property, spending twenty grand, and it suddenly it's worth double. Um, and then reality is it's not. But it's like the dream. I, I think that's what Homes Under the Hammer and these sort of programs do. They try and make it I, look I, really I nice. Say I've never watched it. I'm not. I don't really watch TV. Really? Okay. What? No, no, that's I'll funny. I'll just cut the conversation right there. That's fine. Let's just end that conversation then. But, well, you can you can tell people your opinion. But no, right? that's it. That's that's what happens. Homes Under the Hammer, all these sort of auction TV yeah. programs, they make it look so appealing. Like husband and wife, let's go and buy a property at auction. It's like the the lovely little dream property. Um, it's yeah, worth, but it's like the romantic doing, doing it up. It's together. a romantic, yeah. It's a romantic sort of. Uh, turn your phone off, man. It's incredibly rude. <laughs> That is the romantic um, thing of let's just do this property up. And the reality is they might buy this house. Mm. They probably won't do the due diligence property mm. properly. And then they'll overspend on the refurb. And then they've bought the amount of money they spent in the refurb plus what they bought it for plus the auction fees. It's They've only actually brought it up to what it's really worth. Mm-hmm. So it's not a below market value, sort of a below true market value deal. Mm. Uh, and well, that's you, where I think... You, you do quite a lot of below market value deals, don't you? So yeah. W- what I don't like the word below market value. I well, like, it's not I, a word, is it? It's three. <laughs> All right, I don't like the phrase below market value. Go on. I much prefer the, the the phrase below true market value because a lot of people get hooked on the idea that just because it's advertised for X and they can get it for X, they believe that's true market value. That's market value, but it's not. No. Um, well, I, 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 it's below market value. You don't need to add the word true. I know, it's no. below market value and it's below asking price. Okay. Um... Yes, but a lot of new people and new people think that just because it's advertised for yeah, that, that's yeah, the market that's value. That's like saying I don't like I don't like the word I I don't like the word iPhone because that's not an iPhone, it's a Samsung. Yeah, well don't call it an iPhone then. Below market value is exactly what it says it is. You're saying you don't like it because people are confusing well, it. Well people are people well, do confuse it. Well you um, don't need to add a new word into well, to that's really my confuse new it even word. more. And I know a very good <laughs> finance guy that says the exact same thing. Is it is it in, is that in your book? No, it's not. It is actually. It is. Yes. It is. It's below true market value, not below market value. Oh, just because it's below market value. No, it's below it's, market value and below asking price. Yeah, but you've got a lot of people that are coming probably don't. They get confused with that, and I think that if you try and define it a bit better, it's All better right. for them. Let me ask you a question: How many people find that confusing? No. And what do you? Put, it's you not, you put find your hand down. confusing. You find his one confusing. I agree. No, <laughs> so, it's not so confusing. What do you prefer? I and mean, you guys can please comment below because I think it's quite clear. Below market value, it is what it says it is. And below asking price, which again, it is what it says it is. Or below market value, which apparently now means something different to below market value. And below true market value, which actually means below market value. No. What? It is, it's similar, but I just I want similar. people to understand that it's got to be the, the below market value, value is not below asking price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I want people to understand. Yeah, well, that's the better way of explaining no, it's it. Not. <laughs> I know what I mean. 
Right. So anyway. So okay. So here's, here's my some, question. Then, what are the pros of buying the, an auction? What, well, what's what's the reason for buying an auction? Why would you buy an auction? Because if you know what you're doing, you can get a bargain. Yeah. It, but you've got to know what you're doing. Okay. You've got to understand how auction houses work. Yeah. You've got to understand how they make their money. Yeah. Um, and you've got to go and be very, very controlled. So for someone but who's watching this or listening to this bargain. and thinking, hmm, I don't know what I'm doing. Don't buy auction. Okay. So, but they they do want to get, why, why would they buy auction? Because they want to get a below market value pro- property. Because they want to buy a below true market value property. <laughs> no, because they want to get a, a decent deal. Yeah. Uh, so, so what should they do instead? Take in your somebody opinion? who knows knows what they're doing at auctions, or not buy auction and do what? Try and find them direct to vendor, or try and find them. Well, that's what I can't in a try. much more safer way. Okay. Do you want to do you want to give us an example? Because you um, do this. That's what I'm trying okay, to get fine. out of. It's like getting well, blood just, out of a stone. Just ask it? the question. Man. That's kind of the question I've been you asking. You, you beat around the bush for five minutes to ask a question. Right. Anyway. So if you want to find a, a blow market value deal, you've got to go direct to vendor. You've got to find motivated sellers. You can find lots of motivated sellers on the likes of Gumtree. My theory is, if they're advertising it on Gumtree, they're highly motivated, <laughs> because <laughs> most people don't sell houses on Gumtree. I would agree um, with that. So, think about it. If somebody's selling a property, where do they go? Where would you go if you're selling a property? Right move. You'd go to Right Move or a local estate agent. The local oh, estate sorry, agent yeah. will then, then put, they'll it on, put it on Right Move. They'll put it on Right Move, Zoopla, Zoopla whatever. Yeah. Um, that is the, just historically. If I, put, if I put my property up with an estate agent yeah. and it wasn't on Right Move, yeah. I'd be like. What the hell? Yeah. What is the what's the point? What is the point? Yeah. Well, just think about it. So, you, like me, if I was selling my house, mm. even though I know I could sell it to an investor, um, because I, I, because my connections, I wouldn't do that because it's my property. I would literally go to an estate agent and I would sell it to an estate agent. I would get an estate agent to handle the sale because I want top money well, for what, it. Oh, we talked about this before. Though, what did you make of those homemade sign? Like, why why would you do that? Why would to you me s- that just screams desperation? Or, or put or, it up in the post office, a little a post it <laughs> note in the post office notebook, notebook the little house for sale. But they're the sort of houses you're going to get bargains at. I, I've got some deals going through at the minute that are astonishing. Uh, Russell doesn't know about these at the minute, and I think he'll probably want to buy one. But this is a genuine truth, right? Um, so we've got a house that is worth anywhere between three fifty and three ninety. We're buying them for 180. Serious, mate. I've got pictures to show you today. Serious. They need 40 grand refurb. And the nearest in the same street sold for 353. Same property. And that was th- four months ago, four or five months ago. Wow. Where's it, this? Oh, you're not going to tell me. I'm going to tell you where it is. Okay. I'll show you later. Um, but my point being is that was through a gum tree lead. It's, it's, you need gum tree. You need all these sort so, of things. So, would you recommend? For Actually, someone... no. Let me back up. That wasn't. That was through. That I met somebody at a networking event about that. But I have done lots of properties through Gumtree. Yeah. Um. There's lot. There's there's loads out there. And my my theory is, if somebody's going to advertise their property on freaking Gumtree or another place to look, is Friday ads. There's a paper in London called Friday ads. Just go online. You can Google it. Friday. It's Friday hyphen ads. I don't know. UK. I don't know many of these. I know obviously Gumtree. Just local like that. newspapers and that. What about is that is Craigslist? Do we have that here? I do you know what I did actually see on our Facebook group the other day. Somebody was saying that they were finding lots of leads on Craigslist. Yeah. I, I wasn't sure if that's an American thing. I think it is, but I do think it's coming over to the UK. Um, but all the like, local Maybe you papers. Do one. Alistair's list. Alistair's list. Yeah. It's got a nice ring to it. That it's too long. It is. Uh, my name's too long. Owl's list, big owl's list. Somebody called me Big Owl the other day, and I said, like, "What? Well, I'm not American." <laughs> <laughs> big Owl. I don't think they think you're American. I think they're saying you're a bit. Well, uh, what muscly? <laughs> muscly, yeah, muscly. <laughs> um, no, so that's what I would do if you're looking to find sort of below market value. Oh man, I dropped it. I should have said below true market value. If you're looking, <laughs> <laughs> if you're looking to find below true market values. Um, <laughs> I would start with Gumtree, Friday ads, uh, all that sort of stuff, especially if you're new at it. Owl's list. If you're experienced, mm. I would then go to auctions, but only if you're experienced. And if, if you want to go to auctions as a newcomer, just find somebody who's experienced and, and pay them to come with you. Or go Say, and look, watch. Come with me. I'll pay you a couple hundred quid or whatever. Can't you just get a really whatever. good builder to go around and look at the house, give you detailed feedback, work out what it's worth, and then just go and stick to that? Do you have to be experienced? Can't you just get other people to do the hard work? <clears throat> go into the app. As long as you've got a figure in your mind, and you're and you're just like, well, I ain't going to go above X. Yeah. Does it matter if you're experienced or not? I mean, how... I, I, the, the last thing I'd want to see happen is newcomers come along and, and get wrapped up in the emotion and end up paying too much money. Yeah, but don't, so if you, don't if get wrapped up in the emotion. But if, yeah, how, exactly. how, how difficult is it just to go, well, I'm not going above that, so... 
it, it's very easy if you're a controlled person. But when you're in the buzz, because if you have, you've been to auction, you, you I know the auction you went was a bit of a private auction, wasn't it? It was like there was it was in a pub, wasn't it? Um, was it in like a little? Yeah, it was actually. So there was only about thirty people there. When no, you go to the, was there a lot of people there? There was about hundred. Matt, I couldn't get in the room. Right. Okay. So when you go to there. these, like a lot of auction property auctions, they hold them in like big conference rooms and hotel ro- lobbies and, and not lobby, hotel rooms. They're huge, and there's sometimes four or five hundred people there, and there's a bit of a buzz going on, and it's mm. loud, it's noisy. Sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming if you don't know what you're doing. So, and it's very easy to get wrapped up in the the. Uh, well, Let's just let's go back to basics here. Have you ever bought anything off eBay? I hate eBay. So do I. But have you ever bought anything off eBay? And, it, and Maybe. It's, and it's thirty seconds to or a minute to go, and you're desperately wanting that thing, and you're just whacking bids in, and you always end up paying more. You just got to be careful. I just think you have to be careful. Yeah, I don't like it. I just want to. If I want to buy, I'd rather you go on Amazon and just yeah, same buy as what I'm, I want to buy. I'm, I don't want to be sitting around bidding. It's hard work. Sorry. It's 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 just a theory, yeah, and it's it's a it's a good theory. It is a very good theory. So Hello, I would say, as a newbie, um, as a newbie, I would say, just be prepared and be a little bit educated about auctions before you go in. Don't rush into an auction and start buying. I would maybe go along for a few of them, just see how they get on, um, and just see how how things roll and um, the processes and all that sort of stuff. Um, and then, or go along with Alastair's ID and stuff and then just bid what you want and get a bit yeah. of experience up <laughs> and just yeah I'll get some invoices it's through the post Alastair Keir Cunningham oh cheers cheers for that but <laughs> just put my card details out there and everything four six <laughs> um, awesome no also well, I hope that kind of cleared up a bit about auctions so you know I think the biggest tip in my in my opinion is just work do your due diligence work out what you're happy to pay yeah and then just 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 stick to that. I mean, yeah. how difficult is it just to think? Well, okay, that's the fee I'm going to pay. I'm not going to go above that. And then when when you bid that, just don't bid again. I'm he's a ga- with, yeah. he's a gambler though, so I'm not a gambler. You are a gambler. I play poker. Because I'm not like you insinuate I'm a gambler. Like I'm down in the casino every night, stacks of cash. He is a gambler. He goes to Las Vegas a lot. Yes, he's a gambler. Anyway. Um, I'm now going to introduce you. I'm going to, I, I sat down with uh, Royal Marine, uh, and this is probably my favourite story that we've had on the on on the podcast so I far. I must admit, the guy is uh, he's he's a really nice guy. He is. This is an incredible story. Uh, I'm going to play you a little clip from that right now. Okay, so you come out of the Marines mm-hmm. and you think I want to do property. Yeah. What what made you what made you think you wanted to do property? <laughs> I, I now know that I want to do property, but when I started off, it was um, I had no real intention of, of going in full time. Um, I hadn't heard of any sort of um, training facilities or, or Samuel or um, or his YouTube channel. Yeah. I literally bought my first property in October two thousand and seventeen. Purely to live in, up in Liverpool. Um, yeah. You know, my girlfriend was going to move in with me and bought a house. Need a lot of work doing to it. Um, it was a repossession. And okay. brave. Well, I didn't get a survey done, which was, uh, yeah, may, maybe not my brightest idea. Where did you get the money from for this? Um, I saved through my time in, in the military, you know. Yeah. Um, we go away a lot, so it was relatively easy when you're away to, to put a bit of money aside when you're on ship uh, yeah. and things like that. But did you put, so you put all your money into this property? Yeah, I mean, I put a deposit down, yeah. you know. Um, my, my initially my own property put the 10 percent deposit down and i started doing it up but because i didn't get a survey done i realized that we had um a bit of damp uh but dry right under the stairs oh no and then there was a leak in the roof and um i remember my mum coming around and saying declan what what have you bought around christmas time and uh I was so you like, literally have bought the wor- of the worst property. It seemed like, yeah, uh, a bag of spanners, if you, if you like. Um, so you started doing it up? Started doing it up. Yeah. Um, and quite soon, the, the initial bit of money that I put aside got blown got blown out of the water. And uh, before I know it, I was two, three credit cards maxed out. Oh, no. Um, yeah. Um, so you've got this house yeah. that's horrible. Yeah. You've blown all your savings on it. Everything. Are you living in it at this point? Uh, no, I'm still not living in it. It's still not in a fit position to live in it. So um, you spent all your money on it, it's still not even fit to live in it? Yeah, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. So that's pretty bad. It is bad. Um, and then things things took a slightly even worse turn uh, in the beginning of uh, 2018. Um, my dad was rushed into hospital and he, he, wasn't, he wasn't well for a while. 
and um, we knew he wasn't well, he was going to the hospital, he, he had loads of medication and you know, he was quite a proud man and he knew that me and my brother were off working in Devon in the, in the military, he lives back in Kent and I was going up to Liverpool and, and doing stuff for the house and um, got a phone call from my brother saying he'd gone into hospital and uh, yeah, unfortunately we lost him 10 days later, he had advanced prostate cancer Sorry. and he had pneumonia, no that's, that's fine and, um, and uh, there, was, there was a thing that's kind of why I'm sort of in property now full time and, and that and then discovering Samuel. So he, he said to me while Steve... Oh, when, when was this, sorry? When, when was this happening? This was in February. This year? Yeah, this year. So in February this year, you just come out of the military? I'm still in the military at still this point. Still in the military at this point. Yeah, still in the military trying to juggle a house refurb, my own one, in Liverpool. And then that's obviously everything that came growing, growing into a hole a little bit. Um, went down and spent a couple of weeks with my dad. Um, before we lost him, but before before we lost him, um, he said to me um, in hospital that he was always looking forward to retirement, and he was never well enough to do anything with it. So he retired at 65, and then we lost him four years later. Um, and that, you know, that sort of really ran home to me. You know, it was a bit of a well. I mean, your life falling apart, basically. Uh, yeah, it was a bit of that time, and. Um, you know, and, and shortly after that, uh, I thought, what am I doing with this with this property? Um, and, and that's when I started reading books on property, and I came across uh, the Samuel Leeds by Low Rent High. By Rent High, yeah. and it it was like a lot of stuff in that book um, rang rang true to me. How so? So many people they they work hard. Ninety nine percent of us work hard, and so we're sixty five to then retire on forty percent of what we couldn't afford to live on. <laughs> in the first place and you know my dad he, he worked hard he was the longest since lorry driver he'd leave on a sunday night work all week and then come back on a friday and you know he, he really tried to look after me and my brother and that's what his dad did before and before him and that's what he knew and that was the way that, that life worked and and i thought you know there's got to be there's got to be another way and then um i did inherit i did inherit a little bit of money from him um and I was like, I'm going to make this work, you know. Um, How much did you inherit? That I business? inherited thirty thousand from him. Okay. So that helped me out um, a little bit with with the money. But one of the videos that I remember watching on the on the YouTube channel was, don't don't buy where you live, rent where you live. Yeah. And then buy to rent. So, you know, I rang up um, my mortgage advisor and I said to him, because this was the point now, because um, this was the point where you started to. Educate yourself. Educate. And you realise yeah. you want. So I know that you, obviously you read Samuel's book. Yes. You're watching the YouTube channels. Yeah. Which everything. You've, gone, you've been. You went on the property investors crash course. I went on the crash course. Yeah. And you're learning the stuff now. Th th this is what I love so much about about this story, is that you're in um, such a hard position. I mean, this is only what ten. ten I was filming this like ten months ago. Yeah, it's already December now. So yeah. So this is su you know such a horrible situation. You've lost your dad. You've bought this property that's yes. a, a disaster. You've got no savings left. You're in a really horrible situation. And the way that you learn and the way that you've educated yourself and turned it around is just incredible. So the first thing, well, the first thing that you learned about was a strategy called buy, refurbish, refinance. Buy, refurbish, refinance. So I bought a property and I was refurbing it yeah. um, inadvertently because you know I wanted to put my own stamp on this property. I knew it was a good deal because it had a lot of a lot of stuff that needed doing to it. Yeah. Massively underestimated the refurb cost. Yeah. And I'd spent all this money. Everyone always does. <laughs> <laughs> and I rang up my broker and he'd been in the game like 20 years. He had his own property and I said to him, you know, after reading Samuel's book, can I refinance this? And he was like, well, we have to wait six months okay so but yeah we can get the lender out and they gave me a further advance so I bought the property for 92 yeah 10% 10, 10 deposit um, and then I spent let's say well it would have was 16,000 17,000 the refurb so that's 107 and then it got revalued at 135 um, how awesome is that? I mean, you like, bought it blind didn't even get a survey done on it for yourself right. to live in and then you've managed to Buy, refurbish, refinance it, which yeah. you didn't even know about. Didn't even know about it. Didn't even know about it. Stumbled and across it. So, how much money did you pull out of it? So, I pulled out 28,000. I had to leave 15%. They wanted me to leave 15% of the property. Yeah. So, I started with an 11 grand sort of deposit 
spent 16, 17 in the refurb, all my money back. That is incredible. Yeah. That is incredible. So, I so, love that. So that, that was obviously great. And then obviously what Samuel said in his book about, you know, rent rent your own house or, or, or what, um, rent where you live and then buy to sort of rent out. Yeah. yeah. So um, I spoke to my broker and I said, you know, I'm in, I'm in the Marines. I'm down in Devon Monday to Friday. My circumstances, you know, have changed um, somewhat. Can we look to um, get permission from the lender to rent my house out? And he squared all that away for me. And lo and behold, um, I thought this property would actually work quite well as a multi-let. Yeah. Um, it's quite close to the city centre. Um, you know, great for young professionals or students. Yeah. Um, I was looking maybe in the student market, um, but students wouldn't start until September. So, um, in Samuel's book, he mentions about other stru property strategies like doing service to accommodation with it. So, um, you know, renting out on Airbnb and booking.com, etc. So, we had the Grand National coming up in, in Liverpool around April time, and I remember people saying they could not get accommodation for love nor money. So, I thought we might be onto something here. So, I, I like drastically. Found some old beds, bit of old furniture, nothing, you know, most of it was sort of second hand, some mattresses, took a few photos, put it on Airbnb, and um, I got a booking for the Friday night and a booking yeah. for the Saturday night, um, and over that weekend it was it was £900. So, £900, £900 weekend. Pounds for a weekend for, for, for my house, um, and I at the time was doing all the cleaning, all the laundry for the first month. Yeah. Horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> you, hold on, you were doing the cleaning? So I'd travel up from, from Devon on the Friday, I'd leave work about one o'clock, and then I'd get to the property, this is for all of April, I would um, strip all the beds, clean the house from top to bottom. Quite often we'd have someone that had left on the Sunday or Monday, and uh, and then I'd go and clean it. And then I remember the Grand National weekend was the worst, because I actually went to the National on the Saturday, but on the Friday, we had people that went to Ladies' Day, so they were checking out Saturday, and I had another group of lads checking in Saturday, <laughs> whilst I'm in the, like, wanting to go to the National. So I turned up to the house at 11 o'clock, cleaned it from top to bottom. Some of the lads were still asleep, they made a mess, and and then I made it to the National and unfortunately I got some good reviews from the, from the property for it. <laughs> um, it was an eventful month and unfortunately at the end of the month I got contacted by a management company, didn't even know that they existed and they came round and they said we can we can manage your house for you if you want for a fee and I was like there's the keys. <laughs> just take it, <laughs> just, just take, take it. it. Yeah. So how so how much do you make off that now? Now you've got it properly because I'm assuming now you don't do anything with the house. No, it's a it's a three bedroom which will turn into um, a more of a four bedroom because the front reception room works works well as a bedroom. Yeah, um, and you're doing it a service accommodation now. Though, do yeah? a bit of service yeah. accommodation, um, full time, and yeah, um, averaging two thousand a month after management fees. And then I After have. After all the fees to that, oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, all, it's, all right. it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Bills and mortgage, <laughs> about 600 a month. So hold on, hold on. This, this, this is where it gets weird. So you bought this real rubbish house mm -hmm. with no survey, it was terrible. Yeah. You pull all your money back out after the refurb, mm -hmm. and now you're making £2,000. A month. Profit a month off it. Two thousand profit a month. Yeah, and so my mortgage is getting paid. So your return on investment on that is infinite. Infinite. Yeah. So financially free, pretty much for that one one first property, <laughs> you know, which was going to be my house <laughs> to live in. So from yeah. from reading from from, from, from reading from, a book, from watching reading. YouTube, going to a free event, you have been on the deal for extravaganza as well. I, I've been on the DFE um, since yeah. But you've done well. It's, it's going you've okay. Done, you've done well. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, <Russell. laughs> you've done very well. Like I said before, I mean that was one of my favourite uh, interviews. I think mean, the the story was just um, incredible, and you could f you could feel you could feel his sort of pain mm. and stuff, and where where he was, and and the fact that that was only a year ago. Yeah, man, uh, Declan's um, an awesome guy, and what he's been through in the military, um, and then leaving the military, and then is literally he was in a dark place. He mm. really was. Um, not only had he lost his dad, he'd bought this house that was a bit of a disaster. Mm -hmm. uh, running out of money very quickly. Um, yeah. And then when you look at where he is now, mm. and ha like, <clears throat> I mean, the fact that he bought a house with no plan, no survey, like literally <clears throat> blind. Yeah. And then by 
learning a bit about some of the skills and, mm. and implementing the different strategies. See, it's not like he's just one like HMO or just service accommodation. No, he's no, used no. lots of different strategies to oh, make it, a really rubbish deal good into a brilliant, not, not just good, into an incredible deal. It's, it's phenomenal. It's absolutely phenomenal. But yeah. it, to be honest, it couldn't happen to a nicer bloke. Um, it, he's. So I was just having dinner with Declan last night, um, and we had a few beers, whatever. Um, he's a great guy, and it couldn't. I, I genuinely could not. It couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Mm. Um, he's he's proper like just getting on with this and just doing it, and partly to to I think is to help him remember his dad and to um, sort of honour his dad and honour the inheritance he got. Yeah, um, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, it, it genuinely could not happen to a nicer guy. Yeah, because yeah. he's just he's fully committed. He's he's just decided, he's made the decision and he's going to do it. Um, and do you know what? Sometimes when you make decisions, sometimes they're the wrong decisions. So, like he bought that property. If we if we were discussing that back then, we would be saying that's the wrong decision. Yeah. But look how he's turned it around. So sometimes even if you do make the wrong decision, you can pull it out of the bag and you can well, sort it out. Well, well, there's a saying, isn't there? Is that um, when you're not sure, make a decision because mm. um, taking some action, at least you take an action yeah, and you, 100%. Can, you can correct it. That, yeah. Whereas if you don't do anything, yeah. then, you, then you're then not. So there's a bit of a, there's a few lessons to take from That was the first one, yeah. is that he just took action. And even yeah. when he didn't know what he was doing, he still took action. Mm. And then because he learned what he was doing and he winged it, he, he you know, it, 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 it did come good. But in the he, end. he is a grafter. Well, he said, I don't know if like, it made, I don't know if it made the clip that we just that we just played. I'm not sure, but he said to me, "Oh, it, it could have worked out so differently." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it could have gone so badly wrong. And I said, "No, it it, it couldn't. It wouldn't because it of him. It did go so badly wrong. Yeah. That did happen. Yeah. And you carried on. You pulled it out of the bag, and you would have done that even if this hadn't come through. You'd have done that somewhere else because yeah, of your yeah, attitude yeah. and your desire and your your will to learn and your will to improve yourself. So I think I, I don't I don't believe in luck. So yes, no. there could be some luck, but you make your Bang own on. luck. And he, and if he hadn't have, if he hadn't have got the luck there, he'd have carried on doing what he was doing. He'd have carried on believing. He'd have carried on learning. He'd have carried on fighting, and he would have and he would have got the luck. S- somewhere else yeah. I don't know whether that's been instilled from him from the military or whether that uh, I think with, with, I think with the military you push on don't you mm. they teach pushing on and just no matter what you're going through just keep pushing and he's a prime example of that there's many people would have given up they would have bought that first property it was a bit of a disaster and that would have been a reason to oh property doesn't work yeah, yeah, property yeah. investing is rubbish it doesn't work it's not for me Declan is a, a prime case of yes he made a little bit of a mistake um, he ploughed on, pushed on, got on with it, and look at him now. Financially free through property yeah. in such a short period of time. Amazing. Um, and the guy's phenomenal. Honestly, it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Amazing. It really couldn't. Right, it's now time for this. It's property investing news time. Now then, take a look at this house. It's in Bourneville in Birmingham. And I think you probably agree it looks, well, pretty ordinary, really. But it was the beginning of a property empire for Samuel Leeds. At 27, he's become a multimillionaire through investing in property. But recently, he was challenged on social media to leave his home in Litchfield and build his portfolio again. If I haven't made any money in the next seven days, I will be evicted from my hotel and be on the streets for the week. I've got £50 in my pocket for basic potentials. I've not eaten today at all. It'll be in the bag. But I need to start building my property portfolio again from scratch with nothing. Let's see what happens. Well, he took the challenge and Samuel joins me now. Good to have you with us, Samuel. Great to be here. This sounds quite interesting, but a little bit risky. You had £50, that was all, yep. and a hotel room, and you had to then make money. So how did it go? It went very well. It was very nerve-wracking, and um, the, first, the first six days I was genuinely thinking I might fail, but it all came together in the 11th hour. How did it all come together? Because there was one day when you couldn't afford to buy any food, wasn't there? Correct, yeah. So what I did was, uh, with my knowledge, I found good property investments. And despite not being able to buy them myself, I then found through networking property investors, married the two together, charged a fee, and then used that money to begin. Right, so it's very much about relationships. Yes. Okay. I think it's fair to say, Sam, you're looking at some of this uh, documentary that's available online. Um, You rather enjoy making a deal. Let's just have a look at this. You've got a really good property, so congratulations for securing an, another great deal. And um, I'll drop you an email in the terms and conditions in the next sort of 20 minutes. I'm so pleased about that call because that means I have enough money in the bank to do the rent to rent deals. As soon as he pays it, I can pay for the rent to rent deals, which means I should be financially free tomorrow. 
Right. Yay! Come on, be honest. Was that just for the camera, or did no, you really get a kick out of it? That I really got a kick out of it, and I was filmed like like a fly on the wall, just all the right. time. So, how did this all begin for you? I mean, we said it started with this rather, you know, modest-looking place in Bourneville in Birmingham, yeah. and you were born in Wolverhampton, you're West Midlands through and through. So, how did you build up this amazing property empire? So, I built my portfolio from scratch um, through. Uh, going property networking, I didn't want to work for my dad forever, um, and I managed to agree for some of my family members to be my guarantor. And then as property prices went up, I refinanced and did it that way. And um, it took, took, took me quite, quite, a, quite a few years, right. and yeah, slowly built my p p portfolio from scratch. And you've added something new to it recently. Yeah. Uh, we've covered it here on Midlands Day, actually, Ribsford House yes. in Bewley. It's an amazing looking property, just gorgeous, but it needs a little bit spending on it, doesn't it? It does, seven figures. My word. How's it going? It's going really well. We've got all the planning permission, we've got all the conservation officers to agree on the work, so work should be starting in the spring. And what are your hopes for it? Really to restore it. Yeah, the French soldiers used to train there, so we actually have been in touch with the French soldiers. They're going to come and visit. Uh, Charles de Gaulle used to visit regularly. Winston Churchill's been there. So just to bring it to its formula, former glory is, is really satisfying. And you clearly get a buzz out of it at the age of 27. You could retire, couldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> well, I won't. But you're not going to. No. Okay. Fascinating stuff. Samuel Leeds, thanks very much. Thank Good to have you with us. So that was taken from BBC News from maybe like a few... I think it was um, on Friday night, last Friday night. So it was, yeah, it was a week ago. Um, yeah, really Mid good. six o'clock news, didn't it? Really good to see him on BBC News. That was amazing. <laughs> Did you not tell you he was sitting very upright? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, yeah, it's cool. Um, <laughs> not that he slouches, but it was very, very prim and proper. It was it's very good, prim man. and proper. And he did it, was, it for, his, for his knowledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It was good. It was very. But, it, um, it came across well. And if you if you guys haven't haven't seen the, uh, I mean, you kind of got the idea from that. If you haven't seen the financial freedom challenge on YouTube, I mean, it's had how many views now? Oh, mate, like, is that what seven hundred thousand or is something? Is it seven hundred? I thought it was six hundred because it was getting. Oh, I don't know. Like shared loads of views every single day on YouTube, uh, and the fact that like the BBC have picked up on it, and also there's other other um, networks have picked up on it as well. Um, and there's all the massive, massive players in the uh, seven hundred and fifteen thousand. Wow! As of right now, and there's so. there's a lot of uh, big players in the online industry that have, uh, are like well interested in this. It's like what? It's yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's gone. Nuts. Definitely check it out. It's really, really worthwhile. And the fact that it's making the news, the fact that it's advertising property investment. Yeah, it's is, good. It's is, is for me is a really, really mm. good thing. And, 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 and it's nice to have a good news story because so many yeah. news stories are so. Depressing. Do you watch? Do you, so you don't watch much TV. I mean, I'm the same. I don't watch much TV. If I do, it'll be a film as opposed to like regular TV. Yeah. So I don't watch the news. I don't I watch. It, it's so depressing. I find it very depressing. So uh, why is that? Bad news sells. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I'm not saying I never watch the television. I just never watch TV, if that makes sense. So yeah, I watch, yeah. mo watch movies yeah. and stuff like that. So you're not a, an Emmerdale or an EastEnders fan? No. <laughs> not an no. What a waste of time. Can't st what a waste of your what life. What a waste of it? time. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't. Right, anyway, um, so let's Questions. go move into the Q&A section. So if we uh, phones at the ready, have you got any Have you got any ready? Yeah, man. Go um, on, hit me up, man. So this question. We put a little video out, what, half an hour ago, 40 minutes ago, um, and we're getting questions come through, so let me just jump on and find some. So when you said the other one, the red eh? Yeah, I was not quite ready. So we've got, okay, first one, John. Uh, John Hart said, morning, guys. Hey, John. Morning, John. Uh, Alex waving. Hey, wave. Hi, Alex. Um, well, afternoon, John, actually. Yeah, it is afternoon, yeah. Uh, okay, Catherine Williams. Uh, good morning. I suppose one question could afternoon. be... What are your thoughts on the change? Oh, sorry. What are your thoughts on any changes in the property market following the Brexit vote? Okay, I'm going to let you go with that because I can't stand Brexit. <clears throat> Nutshell, um, they might dip a bit, but don't let it put you off investing in property. Maybe don't do buy refurbish refinance because they might dip. But I mean, is Brexit even going to happen? Who knows? Uh, I'm past caring about Brexit, so yeah, good. We, well, well I answered. Think we did, I think what I will do though <laughs> is is I would point you if you want more in detail on that we actually do cover it in uh, was it episode three i think we did we've episode talked about three, brexit how brexit on. and we, we go into about a 20 minute discussion about our opinions on it so go go and check that out i would say i'll let you take the next one all right um the Catherine williams no no we've just done that one all right um john swift just says morning uh, uh well the one after that is lisa cunningham who's your <laughs> wife and she said what do you want for dinner this evening um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. We'll work that out. But yeah, that's a good question. Well, then answer it. I'm not sure yet. I fancy a bit of steak. 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 A bit of fillet steak. Fillet steak. You can tell he's getting posh, can't you? He? He's an author now. 
<laughs> fillet steak. No, I, I just fancy a nice bit of steak. But. Hi, Alistair and Russell. Looking very smart, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Um, congrats on the book. Would love to know about T's and C's for deal sourcing, please. How do you protect yourself from investors going direct? Okay. Um, terms and conditions of your business are whatever you decide, essentially, because it's your business. Um, you write the terms and conditions. Um, so I get asked this question a lot. Now, I, I would speak to a, a solicitor about getting making sure they're all legal and compliant, but ultimately it's your business. Um, so that you set the terms. If your customer doesn't like that, then they don't buy off you. It's very, very, for me, it's very, very simple. If a customer doesn't like my terms and conditions, literally, we're not going to fall out, but I just say, thank you very much. Uh, we're not going to do business um, because it's my business, it's my terms. Um, I, I make them very clear. So like, for instance, when I'm doing deal sourcing, um, my refund policy is very clear. We obviously offer all of our clients a refund um, time, a period of time to go and view properties and carry out their own research and if they don't want to go ahead they have that period of time to request a refund but again make sure everything that you want in the terms and conditions is crystal clear um and just get that looked over by a solicitor um what was the other part of the question uh, how do you protect yourself from the investors going direct um yeah so a non-disclosure agreement well, um, don't you just take the fee yeah but even then so like for instance i've, I've had this question because obviously we take fees up front uh, that's our terms again if the, the client doesn't like that then we're not going to do business um the reason we take a fee up front is because that's just the way we do business it's my terms my business um do you go into this on your book a little bit yeah the next question was congrats on the book so is it there more info in there there is more info in the book that i've written whatever it takes um yeah. next we will put a, a link below and um, but just quickly on that nda okay so you take a fee up front uh, you still have an nda but however the customer can request a refund after within that refund period of time my the question i get a lot is what if they request a refund what if they go and view it like it love it and then say actually can I have a refund because it's not for me? And then buy they cut you out and buy it themselves. Um, yeah, it, some people, like, most but, investors are not going to do that. Um, do you know what, if would, you do get the one or two that do do it, you, it, you have they, an NDA in wouldn't place. Wouldn't they have to outbid you, though? Because, like, as far as the... As far yeah, as but said, sometimes they might. But, but what, I know it doesn't make sense. Some people are just so short-sighted. They just think, they oh, don't value order, what you've in order done. to save, like, a save, few hundred quid. Yeah, exactly. You just open it up um, again. The, the so yeah, I would use an NDA, and do you know what? If you get cut out of the deal, yeah, just use an NDA to sort of try and protect. Just learn yourself. your lesson and then move on. Don't worry I, too I, much about I it. Think it's so. not going to happen very often. No, uh, I can't find any HMO deals in Birmingham. Do you know anyone that could? Help? I don't think there are any good deal sources in this area. I can't think of anyone. I can only. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not sure, man. No, I'm not sure. Not Give sure. Max a call. A better source. He'll sort you out. Oh uh, yeah, all right. Um, <laughs> How would you handle sourcing a rent to SA deal? Some landlords want to know about your company before proceeding further. If the company is going to change over, how do you explain that to the landlord without scaring them away? Can I answer this? Go on. Just be honest with them. Do not lie to them. Do not try and manipulate them. Be completely honest from the offset, and then you'll have no problem. If you're going to try and do it the sort of um, what, what sneakily it? by like buying it and then you're buying it to sell on to an investor and then you're going to try and sell it without this is telling rent, them. rent to SA this is. Yeah, so what I mean, what I mean oh, is, as a if they're going to try and do it as a sourcer, so they're, they're going to try and get a rent to SA then to sell on for a fee mm. and then they're going to have the awkward conversation with the landlord, oh, look, I'm not actually going ahead, this guy's going ahead. Just be honest from the, literally, be honest from the start. Do not... So what do you say to them at the start? Just say, look, I'm a deal sourcer, I want to pass this on. Yeah, I would just say I represent investors and we're looking for properties in this area for my investors. Is that okay? If it's not okay, you move on. There's no yeah. point in even spending time with these people if you're going to get to this point and then you're going to worry about how you're going to get the get the contracts changed to somebody else. Honestly, I wouldn't worry about it. Just be honest, up, right, up front from the beginning. Cool. Next question is kind of linked, so it might be that we can sort of skip over this a little bit. Okay. But hi, guys. What are the steps from selling the deal to an investor? Do I have to sign the non-disclosure agreement first? Are there any other documents that need to be signed? Um, I would say on this, you need to get educated, uh, 100%. Um, within the academy, we, we run a one-day event where we talk about all of this sort of stuff. So yeah, you need to have uh, term, terms and conditions in place and non-disclosure non agreements, and you have to have a contract in place. Yeah, she also asked about getting contracts. Um, I mean, one of the best ways is to come on the deal finding extravaganza. 100%. Because you get the contracts given, but you get those training as well. Yeah, you come on, you get trained, and you get the contracts. Or go to a solicitor and pay thousands of pounds. 
Yep. Okay, cool. Uh, next question. Um, how to create a power team in the area you want to invest that you can <coughs> afford? Um, if, assuming m maybe if you live five or six hours from there. Well, some of the power team, it doesn't matter where you live. So like your yep. accountant, your doesn't solicitor, matter. it doesn't really matter. So I suppose it depends on who who you're wanting. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, again, that's something that you do a lot. Yeah, so I'll, I'll give you a little tip on that. Um, when you're finding a property and say, for, let, let's just go nice straight down the line. It's going to be a HMO and it's going to be in, name a, name a city, Nick. Sheffield. Sheffield. So you're, you're going to buy a HMO in Sheffield, yeah? Right. You're going to need a HMO manager. So find a HMO manager. Um, there's very various ways to find that. Google, looking on likes of open rent spare room, finding people that are already looking after rooms and just approach them and say, look, I've got this property. Would you look? Would you like to manage it? I guarantee you 100% that that HMO manager knows a builder. I guarantee you they know an electrician. I guarantee you they know a plumber. So there's your power team. Your power team is your HMO manager. And then if something goes wrong, they'll know tradesmen that can go out and fix it. There's your power team. So just use the letting agent. Just use the letting agent. Unless you really want, if you, or you, you can do it other ways. You can go up to the area, go around all the builders and meet them and get an arrangement with them. But the letting agent's already done that for you. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about it. Cool. That's what I would say. Makes sense. Makes sense. I think sense. it's pretty straightforward. Is there any more questions? Um, did I look, did, did it lock out? The, it, it locked out. Okay, let's have a look. Um, also, bum, bum, bum. Maybe, maybe do one more. Oh, one more. Russell, what steps did you take to secure your first deal? Uh, this is from Lisa Jane Boyle. I think you've asked a question in the past that we've answered, but never mind, you can ask two. You can ask as many as you want, Lisa. <laughs> Ignore him. He's just a, a moaning Scottish skeptic. <laughs> Turned successful property investor and buy his book, <laughs> whatever it takes. tagline. <laughs> Um, I'm just I'm plugging my phone in because so my guys. my first deal was a um, again I think I can't we've discussed this before was have, it the I flat in Walsall or something flat like. Hensford yeah, yeah. Hensford. so uh, I didn't have any money when I bought my first deal at all so I found a cheap property um, and I, I ended up <laughs> I had to put in twelve thousand pound and I got, where did the twelve grand come from I got a loan from the bank cool um, for um, home improvements. <laughs> It really improved my home situation. <laughs> it did, didn't it? Did, it? It, did, it, did. it was definitely a home improvement. Well, compared to no home. Yeah, um, well, that's good. So, um, so yeah, I just got a loan from the bank. And the deal that I did, the the bank loan, I think it was £236 a month. And the mortgage was £199 a month. And I bought it already tenanted. And the uh, the rent was 450 So, basically, I was making about £10 a month mm -hmm. for the first Oh, it was a long time. Might have been set five or seven years. I can't remember now, but it was quite a long time. And then the loan finally got paid off. Um, I had to pay for a couple of repairs, which I, I maybe broke even probably for the first five years. I was going to say if you only make a ten or a month and the boiler breaks, uh, the boiler didn't break. It was the it was story the storage heater. Oh, okay. So I, I bought so at that I actually bought off eBay. Oh, did you? Yeah, well, it wasn't me. Did you get into a bidding war at the end of the auction? I didn't actually buy it. I <laughs> told my Anna's dad, I was like, do you know where I can get storage heaters from for cheap? And he bought me a couple off eBay. Oh, okay. Um, I've obviously paid for it, but he did the bidding. How much were the it? storage heaters? Oh, dude, you're talking about... 70 quid, 80 quid? Probably, yeah. So they wiped out seven months profit. <laughs> Each, 14 Each months. Half, it's a year and a half's profit. It's a year and a half's profit. <laughs> but you could look at it and you could go... <laughs> That's a bit of a crap deal. Yeah, but at the end but of the day, I put no money in. It got mm -hmm. me on the ladder. It was my first on the ladder. Now it's worth about £30,000 more than it, was, yeah. than it was. It hasn't gone up much, but still I've made thirty grand. And you've had the same tenant. Same tenant the Since whole time. The, the, yeah. well, I've never put a rent up. I just kept her in the whole time. So that is how I very first got on the ladder. So if your tenant's ago. watching, is she due a, ten, is she due a rate rise at the moment? I never rise. I never yeah, rise. The, never good. rise because I don't want to... As soon as you rise, and I'm a tenant myself because yeah. I... I preach the um you buy investment properties so yeah. when you buy if you're buying for yourself it's you're not you're buying with your emotions because mm -hmm. when you're buying for yourself you 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 want it to be a certain way and it's probably not a very good investment property yeah yeah i agree in with my that. opinion so i'd rather invest in property rather than buy where i live mm -hmm. um so i rent where i live and i know as a tenant when the rent gets put up what's the very first thing i do i go and look at what else is available for that price <clears throat> okay. so um because I, I want, so I just don't want to risk it. 
I don't cool. want one void month and it's, it's wiped out. Yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean? So for me, no, I'd rather just keep her in, keep her happy. Yeah. Let she she never contacts me ever. Good because she probably thinks if she contacts me, I'll you put the rent, rent up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's great, so, it's perfect. Well, guys, thanks ever so much for tuning in this week. Thank you for all the questions. Uh, we'll try and answer some more of them next week. So ask away. Um, please don't forget to subscribe by clicking the button below. And don't forget to join us next week, Friday at 4 o'clock. We hope to see you there. See you then, guys. See you next week.